Even experienced dentists sometimes make these mistakes during root canal treatment and the result, fire breakage, failed root canal treatment and unsatisfied patient. I've made these mistakes myself and honestly in dentistry you never stop learning. Every day brings new lessons. If you're new to the channel, hello my name is Amad Vakar. I'm a dentist from Pakistan, currently working in Germany and I make lectures helping dental students and dentists improve their skills, confidence and knowledge. In this video I'll show you the three most common mistakes in root canal treatment that I've personally seen, why they happen and most importantly how to avoid them. The first mistake is skipping or compromising on the straight line axis. I've done this myself and I can completely understand that when you are on a time crunch, it's very tempting to just start straight away with the rotary files without first properly establishing a proper straight line axis. But here's the problem, without a proper glide path, your files are working in an unnecessary stress which could lead to file breakage, uh, ledge formation, transportation of canals and in severe cases even perforation of the canals. In my earlier root canals, in order to conserve as much structure as possible, I used to not widen my access cavity that much which would then lead to improper visualization of all canals, improper disinfection and very troublesome obturation. So now I always make sure that my access prep is just wide enough so that I can visualize all the orifices and that my files and my irrigant can go inside the canals without unnecessary stress and without over preparing or without over expanding the access cavity than it should be. So I would recommend spending time into creating a proper access cavity so you can clearly visualize all the canals and the orifices. Use magnification if possible. I personally use ergo loops in my daily practice and they have really elevated my work in and really helped me in better visualization of all the orifices. Always hand file to a full working length before introducing rotary files. This will make sure your glide path is properly established. And finally, remove all pulp chamber roof structures that may deflect instruments. Remember, your rotary files are only for shaping, not for finding the way. Mistake number two, over or under instrumentation. In other words, instrumenting beyond the apex or not reaching the entire working length at all. Over instrumentation can irritate the peripical tissues which could then lead to intense pain or delayed healing while under instrumentation can leave some infected tissue behind which could then result in reinfection or failure of a root canal treatment. The best way to avoid this is always confirm your working length before introducing the rotary files ideally using both an apex locator and a radiograph. Recheck if you change files or encounter any kind of unusual resistance. For calcified canals, manage with hand files like C files gently negotiating to the entire working length and avoid forcing the file. Remember to just guide the files inside the canals rather than drilling the canals. And lastly, never forget to irrigate between the files to clear your path. Imagine the canal as a narrow corridor. If you just keep on pushing debris at one end without clearing your path as you go, you are just creating more blockage. Which brings us to our third point. Mistake number three, poor irrigation technique. The third mistake is relying only on mechanical cleaning and ignoring proper irrigation. Sodium hypochloride and EDTA are your real friends in disinfection and the success of a root canal treatment depends more on how well you can clean and shape the canals rather than what type of obturation material you use. The best practices for irrigation are irrigate after every file to flush out any extra debris, use side vented needles to reduce extrusion risks, activate your irrigant either ultrasonically or with a manual agitation method, Keep needle inside the canals without binding and without extrusion of the irrigant beyond the apex. Remember proper irrigation and cleaning are the true factors in determining the success of your root canal treatment. So these were the three of the most common root canal mistakes that I personally seen and I personally made in my earlier days of performing root canal treatment. I am currently working on a course, a detailed course on 10 of the most common mistakes that I have personally seen in root canal treatment uh, with case examples, different techniques and how you can manage them and radio with radiographic examples. So do check out my website for any kind of update. I will also update the link in the description and the pinned comment as soon as a course is live and ready. I myself learn new things each and every day and I try to share what I've learned so far so that I can help others as well. If you found this video helpful then do subscribe to my channel for more clinical tips and insights. This is something uh, new that I've started with my channel I'm with more of these kind of videos with speaking to the camera. It's a little bit new to me but I will try to make as many videos as possible. I will see you guys next time. Till then take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.